Hello, Keith Ruck here at VentureSchemery.org. Well guys, we are today pretty much going to be wrapping up a uh, scraping class that I've been hosting here at my shop. This is the third uh, Richard King hand scraping slash machine rebuilding class that we've taught here. And we brought in Richard King, who is uh, basically the instructor for the class. He does these classes, has been doing them kind of all around the country, even all around the world over the past, I don't know how many years. He's probably taught about 30,000 students uh, the process of scraping uh, over his career, uh, which has been a, quite a long one. And uh, Richard uh, has publicly stated that he's kind of probably approaching retirement. He's not through teaching yet, uh, but he is kind of cutting back a little bit and uh, not doing as many classes as he has been doing. And I'm hoping that sometime down the road that we can maybe do a few more of these before he completely retires from it. But uh, it's been a really good class. Uh, and this morning, I think what I'm gonna do is as some of the students come in, uh, we'll go around and kind of show you some of their projects. So a little bit about the class. So it's a five day class that we offer here. And on the, the first part of the class, students basically come in and they just work on scraping in a little test block. So we give them a little block of Durabar cast iron and uh, they just start practicing first with a hand scraper, uh, scraping that uh, part in to get it flat. Uh, and once you learn how to get something done by hand, we then start over again using uh, the Biax power scrapers. And uh, those make it go a lot faster, it's a lot easier, uh, but you first learn to do it by hand. And we do it both ways because quite honestly, the Biax scrapers are quite expensive. Um, you know, a used one on eBay, $800 or $1,000 is probably a good deal. So many students who take the class probably are never going to do enough scraping to justify buying one. So they're going to probably go home and do things by hand if they do any scraping. So anyway, we teach both methods here. And after you kind of learn the power scraping, then the students bring in some projects of, of their own to work on and uh, they start working on those. Uh, and we start getting into a little bit more advanced uh, scraping techniques. So now we're not just scrapping, scraping something flat. Uh, some guys are working on squares, like a, a setup block that's square. So not only are you scraping it flat on one surface, but on two surfaces, and you have to have an alignment problem. And we teach you how to do that. Uh, we got a couple of guys who are working on ways like on a saddle on a lathe or a compound off of a lathe or something like that. Uh, we got some straight edges. We got a machinist vise over here, uh, a, a universal vise that rotates and tilts and everything. So anyway, we'll kind of introduce you to those. The class is an awesome experience. Uh, everybody that I've ever had take the class and finish the class basically has just said, you know, they learned so much. And it's, it's really a, a good, skill to have some basics in. When you finish this class, are you a master scraper? By no means, you're not. You gotta go home and, and practice and keep up your skills. And uh, there's still an awful lot to learn, but when you leave here, you at least have a good foundation in the basics. You understand the principles and you've really picked up the proper habits of how to do scraping properly, uh, which is very important. So anyway, we'll go around and show you some of the projects and uh, introduce you to some of the students as soon as they start coming in this morning. Yeah, my name is Russ Russell. I'm from uh, Stockton, California, and I'm working on a angle plate and got it all scraped in a square within two tenths. Um, and, uh, so you got it square this way yeah, and square and on the sides too. Sides too. I'm still working on this side for side for parallel, but I'm still about three tenths off on that one. So okay, get that finished up today. Great class. Uh, learned a lot and, and uh, looking forward to the next class. So um, this was a pretty challenging project with all the geometry involved and all the angles. So that was a, that was a learning experience, I guess. Oh yeah. Uh, and that's why I kind of picked this one so that I wasn't just scraping to flat that uh, I had some challenges and <clears throat> that's good. Um, it's all, I wanted to get it within two tenths and I'm there on, on most of the sides. Uh, get a couple more done today and be ready. Good deal. Well, it looks great. Good job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Brian Block. Got the YouTube channel BC Block 02 out of Kentucky, where I do typically bigger jobs than what I'm doing here today. 
But I've decided to come down south and try and learn a new trade because you never know what you might need to be doing someday. And my project I'm working on here is I had a universal mill table that I use on my mill for setting up to do odd angles because you can pivot this thing, swivel it around, or set it up right so it's like a compound uh, sign vise except it uses a swivel instead of 290s to do what it does. So you can set it at any angle. So I picked this project because I figured it'd be a difficult one to do because there's so many alignments on it. You know, since you got three axes, it all have to be either parallel or perpendicular to each other. So scraped in the base and the swivel and working on the top here now. And I've got it down to within a tenth. And I thought I had it really good according to the granite plate, but somehow or another, Richard seen that it was a tenth out when he looked at it in the middle. So I'm in here trying to knock off a few little high spots to see if we can get the straight edge to sit on it straight and not rock, which, I mean, it didn't really rock even with the tenth, but uh, you could just barely, it just, it doesn't hinge right on it. So that's one of the things that, that went over in the class was about hinging the parts to determine where it's actually touching at. So, I'm in here trying to get this thing to within actually less than a tenth, which is way better than it needs to be, but I've got time to screw with it, and I got help here to tell me what I need to do to do it, so now's the time to do it. That's why I didn't pick something easy to do, because uh, you can do easy stuff on your own. <laughs> it's be better to be able to ask for help when you got something more complicated, so. Well, it looks great. Um, in this this is a this was probably one of the most challenging projects I think I saw in the shop because there's just so many things that he was doing here and and uh, we was talking about it. It was interesting because he, when he blew it up on the plate, it was getting contact all the way across, but it was high right here in the middle. So basically, it was rocking on the plate, and it was only like two tenths, so you couldn't really feel it. Yeah, it was two tenths total from yeah. one to the other, so, so that's only a tenth high. So anyway, he was uh, he was. Uh, it was it was rocking. It was blowing up perfect, but when he put the straight edge on there, you could just barely feel that rock. So it probably, under most circumstances, wouldn't have been enough to worry about. But it's a good well, learning experience. Considering it was like twenty thousandths out when it started, <laughs> you know, and, and also I guess where when you turn it around it's, or, it or move it and yeah. put it back, it's within probably three tenths or maybe a half thousandths at most in the worst spot, which is. Plenty good for what it's going to be. That's great. That's great. Good project, Brian. And you used a combination of power scraping, and now you're just kind of bump scraping with your hand scraper on this real fine stuff. Yeah, just which of course the base I had to hand scrape all of it because it was, yeah, it was real circular. narrow, and there's a ledge that sticks up, and I had to master one side and, and made it to the other side once I got it through in order to do it all because it, it wasn't you can't sit it down on anything, and the base. There's no, there's nothing machined on it except for where they put it together. So there's no reference surfaces. So mm -hmm. that makes it a little tricky. Basically, you just have to start at the bottom and build Work your way, way up. up. Yep. Well, good job. Y'all go check out Brian's YouTube channel. What's the, what is it again? BC Block O2. Yep. No K. It's just BC B L O C zero two. Easiest way to find it is just Google search this old barn shop and about. A hundred hits will come up. There you go. <laughs> it's worth checking out, guys. Uh, Vincent Salerno um, from Northern Michigan, Northern Lower Michigan, and I have a um, a compound cross slide from an Elgin speed lathe, a second operation lathe. Um, for the most part, it was pretty worn out and just nothing slid, so I started. Got that flat, got that parallel, flat and parallel, flat and parallel, flat and parallel. These weren't too bad, not that much wear in there, so I kind of skipped ahead because I wanted to get as far in the project as I could because of the help and the equipment that I had available to me here. So then uh, this is flat, flat and parallel, flat and parallel, flat, parallel, and this is where I had a lot of wear. And in that dovetail. And the dovetail, you know, it was kind of like that. And um, so it took a lot of time. I got this one flat. And then 
what I did is made this one parallel to this one and flat. So there's not a gib in that, or there is. There is. It's okay, like, oh, it's on that part piece. Okay, yeah, I got so you. So the, the gib would be there. Yeah, it's on in. that side. Great. So then I went in, into this one, and this is kind of interesting because I have two bearing surfaces. It bears here and it bears here. So same thing. Just just keep keep you know once you, once you get started, you just keep scraping, glue that to that, and make them make them all match. So not Good deal. perfect, but it, it's working. Well, you can make it perfect. Just yeah, keep scraping. <laughs> right. So I mean, yeah, it's a great class. A lot of a lot of great resources here, and it's just it's a, it's a good time. Good deal. Yeah. Great. Thanks. So I'm uh, Nick Stalen from Loveland, Colorado, uh, and I'm making this angle block. Uh, I think it was just Chinese or something. It, it wasn't very good. It was just milled, but now it's all scraped within a couple tenths. I started with these, got them parallel or uh, square and then I uh, did the edges too. Now I'm working on the top sides. Uh, so yeah, the class is really great. Uh, there's really no substitution for being, doing something with somebody with so much experience. You know, you can read books and watch videos all you want, but when you're doing something and somebody's looking over your shoulder, they can really tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So it was a real valuable experience, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, the reason that I've, hosted the first class because I want to take it, but I, I actually had bought the Conley Machine Rebuilding book and I was reading it and uh, I literally, I, I read most of that book cover to cover and as I was reading it, I'm like, well, I, I understand what he's talking about, but I just don't quite understand the techniques and I'm a hands-on learner, so I contacted Richard King a little over a year ago and uh, that's what kind of started these classes up out here at the shop. Um, and having that hands-on experience and having a mentor right there that can look at you and tell you you're screwing up or you're doing it right or whatever is really, in my opinion, a, a big plus. Yeah, I mean, because you can do it if you read about it, but there's a lot that you're doing real inefficiently. It would take you forever, and, mm -hmm. you know, he can really dial you in. So. Yep. Yep. Good deal. Well, the project looks great. Scraping looks great. And I know I've been watching and measure this thing up and it's, it's uh, really dialing in nice. It's going to be a nice piece. Yeah. Great. Good job. Thanks. I'm Jeff Snipes. No. I'm in from Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Brought down my Sheldon Lathe saddle and cross feed that had some, it had some wear issues and some straightness issues, flatness issues. So. Richard sh showed us all how to scrape, how to flatten, how to straighten things out, measure to very fine accuracy. The class is really good, uh, definitely worth it. Learned a heck of a lot, and uh, you know, it empowers you to do more on a machine now than I ever would have been able to do before. So I'm not a tradesman, I'm not a craftsman, I'm a hobbyist. So where are you gonna go to learn hand scraping? Nowhere, something like this. So. Thanks to Keith for putting this on, hosting. Richard, of course, for coming down and teaching. And uh, yeah, it's a really good class. Learned a lot, and I think it's well worth it. Good job. Thank you. Hello there, YouTube world. I'm here at Keith Rucker, Rucker's shop. I'm working on a, a parallel in the uh, Kingway scraping class. It's been a little difficult just because of the metallurgy. But um, learning a ton, class is uh, so informative, all this hands-on with a coach behind you. Uh, you just learn so much more than, than watching the video or talking. So making progress, for sure. Good deal. Where are you from? From Los Angeles, PTC. Uh, probably people talking about me occasionally on their <laughs> YouTube channel. We make a little hardness tester and a few other things. So Good deal. Glad to add this skill to my repertoire. Great, good job. And appreciate Keith hosting us and putting up with us. Yeah, project's turning out nice. So yeah. you're making yeah. some progress on that. Absolutely. And learning some skills along the way. A lot of skills, good a lot deal. of skills. Good deal, great. Yeah, great class, Re highly recommended. So got Richard King here with me. Of course, Richard's our instructor for the class and uh, we're just wrapping up. We've been hard at it for five days. Uh, you guys got to see some of the projects that some of the students brought along. Uh, 
that we put in here. And anyway, I was going to just have Richard kind of tell a little bit about his class and a little bit about him and uh, what all we do here. That's our third class and a bunch of, uh, we got some couple retired professional machinists and we got some uh, machinists and computer programmers and all kinds of different trades that all have a little shop in their, their garage and they always wanted to learn how to repair their gibs or their machines and it's it's a, it's for me it's a really fun uh, experience and um, just to see the guys light turn on you know they're struggling and first couple days and then all of a sudden bang they got it and they they really get to it and they understand how to get something within a tenth and maybe they'd never held more than a half a thousandths or career but mm -hmm. you get things with tenth fifty millionths and it's just nice to see them be able to do that. So how long have you been in the, this trade, this business of scraping and rebuilding machines? Well, my father owned a, a company, it was called Precision Machinery Builders. And he, he learned during World War II and then after the war he started his own business up in Minneapolis. And I don't know, some of you guys may have heard of a Kingway alignment instrument. That's, that was my dad's invention. And um, anyway, we sold that through Shear Tomiko as a license and to do all for a while. And then we made them for several years. But I, uh, I remember when I was just a little kid, maybe eight to 10 years old, down in the basement, chicken scratching is what I call it, just kind of just making, making chips, little chips, to be what my dad did. It was fun then. And, <laughs> and uh, then as the summer vacations through uh, junior high and high school, I worked for my dad. Uh, summer, like I said, summer vacation. I worked at Onan's, Control Data, Nortronics, and I got a real education because we, we did a lot of different things. And then uh, I got upset with my dad in, the, in 1970, and I went to Alaska with some friends, and then he, he asked me to come back, go to work for him. And so after 1971, I started working full time for him. And luckily, we started to work for a used machinery dealer up in Minneapolis. And we might work on a jig bore one month and a punch press the next month or a grinder or a Cincinnati mill, a centerless grinder. So I got just this tremendous exposure to all kinds of different machines. And uh, so that's probably why you know I can usually help people with different questions. You know, I, I've been accused of being a bragger, but I don't consider it bragging. I'm just telling you my experience, and I hope that you take it, you know, as, you know, thanking. I, I don't do it, talk about my life to be, you know, a bragger, but I just got lucky in my life to be able to do what I do. Well, there's no doubt that you're a wealth of knowledge, and uh, as we've, I've seen in like this third class I've been involved in, and everybody brings in different projects, and we've had everything from really basic stuff to some pretty crazy things. And Richard, it's every case like, oh yeah, we've done this before, and this is how you need to go about it, and uh, it's really helpful to not to have to figure it out through trial and error, but have someone here that can really help you along with it. So. Um, Anyway, the classes, you've been doing the class and teaching for how long now? Uh, I think around the um, 84, 85, I started, I did, I think my first class at General Motors, I went in there and they were all scraping by hand and off the cuff, I I'd sold them a Kingway. And off the cuff, I just said, why aren't you using Biax scrapers? And uh, they didn't really know what they were. And, and at the time I wasn't associated with DAPRA well, they ended up buying, I think, 30 scrapers. I could have got a good chunk of change on it <laughs> if I'd have been a, selling them then, but I, I wasn't. And I, I'm a distributor for them, but I don't really ever sell much. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm what they call their national instructor. Daper has me on their website. They're the USA importer of the Biax scraper. And then over, uh, so then I started teaching that. I went to Taiwan, I taught over there for several years. I 
I don't know, Timken, Cummins, uh, oh geez, Air Research. Uh, I've been at eight divisions at GM and just teaching. And uh, if you go to my website, uh, handscraping.com, and you look under testimonials, you'll see one in there from a guy named Norm Janicek, who is the foreman for Timken Rebuild. And he said that after the first class, the other technicians wanted to go, and the ones that had been experienced learned something. So, you know, I, I, like I said, I was real lucky. I learned from a really good rebuilder, and we had all kinds of experience. So, And then I started teaching these, these hobby classes. I went to Ashland, Wisconsin. I think it was my first one back probably 10 years ago, I'm guessing. And, had several, several since then. Gone to Europe and uh, Germany, right to the factory that makes the power scrapers, Biax. And as a matter of fact, and and I think I'm leaving on the 16th of uh, November, and I'm going to teach three classes in Germany. Uh, one at a place called Roper Machine, a huge machines, and then a rebuilder, and then at a, uh, a technical school, and then I fly from there to England and teach a bunch of guys like you guys, hobby guys, that want to fix their machinery. And then I come home and got them in Texas in February. Um, oh, geez, Born and Cole again. I've been there. This will be my third trip to Born and Cole in Rockford, Illinois. I'm going to Springfield, Vermont, and Northern California. That one's full. And, uh, and like Keith's always got a full class. So we don't really need to recruit. <laughs> So, but I've been teaching a long time. I'm thinking about retiring, but I, when I started telling people I was going to retire, I just got so dang busy. Uh, my accountant says, as long as you're healthy, you must well just keep doing it. There so. you go. Well, good deal. Well, Richard, we appreciate you coming down again, and uh, I okay. hope to have you back sometime in the future. I don't have a class scheduled right now, but I'm hoping that maybe next year we can do another one at some point in time. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you All very right. much. You bet. And, uh, Thank you. Again, thanks a lot for coming. You bet. All you right. Bet. Well, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're interested in taking any scraping classes, uh, go to handscraping.com and send uh, Rich an email, and he can tell you about any classes upcoming. And uh, it's, a, it's a worthwhile class. It's a worthwhile experience. I can tell you pretty much everyone that's taken the class so far, I think it feels like they, they've gotten something out of it. So uh, uh, anyway, if you're interested in doing it, We'll get you taken care of. Thanks a lot, Rich. You bet. All right. Bye-bye. Take care.